All right, everybody. It is I, DZ Maven, with another Gunpla review unscripted, coming at you from my desk of many things. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the real grade MSN 02 Xeong. This is a very new, newish real grade kit. It came out in January of 2021, this year, for the retail price of 5,500 yen. A bit more expensive than the average real grade, but there is a lot here. Despite that, this thing has no legs. Anyway, photos. Here's the box art. Nice big box art. Very menacing glare from the uh, Xeon here. I do also want to note that the box for this kit is big. This is a master grade size box here, so it's big, it's thick, and it's a typical box you would see with a master grade kit, not with a real grade kit, so <laughs> there's a lot of plastic in this thing, so anyway, some side information on the kit here, giving you a little bit of a preview of what is to come with this kit, yes, what what is to come. Here's some action shots of the uh, Xeong. And just no general information, whatever. Here's what you get when you open up the box. Lots of runners, lots of plastic here. Take a look at the manual here. You can see here, as you can tell right away, this kit comes with one big bonus, which is kind of essential for it anyway. It has an action-based stand. I always, I always like it when Bandai includes a stand. Anyway, construction is good. You start with the head, and then you move on to the chest unit here. So the Xeon was always one of those Xeon suits that I never really found to be that interesting looking. Like, oh, it's a flying torso with extendo arms. That was kind of the whole thing with, with it. And I was like, okay. Not really that interesting, is it? So, but this real grade, this kit here, this is something special. Here's the arms, yes. So I just kind of flip through the booklet real, real quick here. It's not really a whole lot for me to, for me to point out here. And again, here's the action base stand that comes with the kit. Big stand, but it uses the 144 attachment arm. And here, just showing off some uh, things you can do. You can disconnect the arms, you can put wires in the arms, you can attach the arms to these fiddly little stand things, and you can turn the mono eye around, and you can take the head off, and you can open the hatches on it, and you can put little extendo feet and move the main thrusters on the hips around a little bit here, and you can do all that stuff. As you can. So it comes with the typical real grade sticker markings. For such a larger real grade, it doesn't really have that many uh, stickers, which is kind of surprising, but it's kind of welcome also, because the stickers that it does have kind of accent the kit instead of, uh, de instead of detracting from it, so I'm okay with them. And you get wires. You get your two black wires for the extendo arms. And one red wire that goes on the inside of the kit, which I will show you here shortly. Anyway, runners here. A runner, multicolor runner. Get your dark blue, a little bit of purple, black, and your clear parts for the visor and the mono eye. If you want a pink mono eye, you will either have to use a sticker or you will have to paint it yourself. I chose to paint it, but it looks nicer. Anyway, this is a real great kit, so there should be an MS joint frame in the kit somewhere, and here it is. It is the hands, or more no accurately, the fingers. So this is pretty nice to have. This is, I think some people honestly really pre would prefer this instead of trying to assemble the fingers by themselves, which, let's be honest, that would probably be a real pain he has to do, so I'm glad Bandai uh, did this here. The only thing I will say about this here, do be careful 
bending the joints on this thing here. Especially the joint that is like right here at the knuckle. Be really careful about that one because that one I feel like is the one that would be most likely to break if you overstress this part. So be very careful bending that. Next runner, gray plastic, most of the parts for skirt torso. I'm probably going to go through these pretty quick here. Um, parts for the hands, arms, or the torso, the head, skirt armor. There are two tones of uh, this light gray. It's kind of a light bluish gray. There's a lighter shade and there is a darker shade. You get two tones. You get your typical real gray two tones. So now we're getting into some of the internal frame parts. It's all dark gray plastic. This is something that I do want to point out here. Look at this. Look. Look. Look at what is going on here. This thing is packed with so much surface detail on the internal frame. It is just mind-boggling. I mean, this is... If you're, if you're a lover of nice internal frames on your Gunpla kits... This is a this kit would should be a must buy for you. Even if you don't like the Xeon as a suit, there is so much going on inside of this kit that you will have a field day with this. Like I was thinking about this the other day about this kit. And I was like, you know what? We're at the point now. We're, we're at the point now. And I'm serious about this. The real grade line is outperforming the master grade line now. I'm serious about that. It used to be you would get this type of detail with the master grade kits, but not really so much anymore. Not not, not in the past few years with kits. The, the internal frames have kind of been simplified on the master grade line now. So it's like you get some detail, but most of it there is mostly just structural stuff. It's not really... You don't see any detail anymore. But now you have it on the real grade kits. And then the real grade kits are, in my opinion, they are starting to outperform the master grade line now. So it kind of makes you wonder about things. Anyway, you get this uh, red color for the uh, Brushter Bells. The photo here is not really doing this justice here. This is a super bright red color. It's almost like fluorescent red. So it doesn't really turn... You can't really see it in my uh, picture here too well, but it's very bright. Anyway, here's some more uh, blue or shoulders, and here's a yellow. You get two tones of yellow with the kit. You get a lighter shade and a darker yellow, which is kind of a more of an orangey color. And the rest here, I think, is just stuff for the action base frame. It's a typical runner you would get, get with the Action Base 5. Most of this stuff you're not going to use, so just snip it off, put it in a bag, save it for later or something else if you want to use it for some other kit. You get three stands, three base stands, I want to say. And you get two of these um, additional option support arm thingies. I've seen these before on other kits before. They're they're kind of made of a softer plastic than the regular hard plastic, so they kind of like, they kind of wiggle a little bit here. I'll show you. Anyway, back to the internal frame here. Here's the kit assembled with the inner frame, as much of it showing as possible here. <clears throat> I mean, just just look at this thing. This thing is beautiful looking. You can see a little bit of that red wire around the main thruster right there. But yeah, th yeah, this is what I'm saying. I don't think I've seen anything like this on a master grade kit in a long time. And this is this is what I mean. I'm I'm seriously beginning to think like the real grade line is going to supplant and it might even eventually replace the master grade line the way things are going. Because so many master grade kits now are being like cheap Bandai stuff now. So like, mm -hmm. it's like I kind of feel like Bandai's putting a lot of their talent into the real grade line now instead of the master grade line, so... I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what the plan is in the long term here, but... 
It definitely seems brighter for the future of real grade, provided they keep up this level of quality. I did mention I did paint the mono eye up. Uh, with this, I did a little bit of fluorescent pink Gundam marker behind it, and I used the clear red Gundam marker on the front. Uh, I think that's what I used. That's what you got here. And actually works out pretty good. It turned out a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, here is the bend back on the torso here. Here is the mono eye moving side to side. It moves along with the neck, so it is connected together. Here's a look at the underside. All these thruster bells. All this detail. All this mechanical glory. Here's a little bit of the action posing for the frame. And just a little bit more here, just to show off here. Alright, so here's the kit completed here with everything on it. And again, with everything on it, it still looks good. This is the best looking Xeong I have ever seen. And I think, and I think that anybody has ever seen. Certainly, it, the Master Grade just pales in comparison to this. The Master Grade kit is like really, really old. Very bland looking. This is just leagues better. Again, as I mentioned, the real grade stickers, they kind of accent it. They don't really overwhelm the kit, and that's what I kind of like about this here. The colors are pretty good. Again, you got those two tones of uh, light grayish blue, and there's like two tones of blue on the uh, chest as well. And you get two tones of the uh, yellow as well. And there's the back. I suspect something. They have this little hatch on the back of the torso, which I'm not certain if that serves a purpose for anything yet. Maybe in the future. There's the arms here. Front shot. More the head with the mono eye. Now, for some reason the mono eye catches the light really, 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 really well, with, well with what I did here, and I, I actually really like it here. So you can you can see it really easily through the uh, the clear visor. Even better when you take it off. So yeah, you can take this uh, top piece of the head off and then you can move the mono eye up and around if you want to have it posed like that and that's what it would look like with the uh, visor back on and looking at the back here's the arms extended out and that is the arms kind of curled in sort of into a fist it's not really a tight fist but it's that that's about as far as it's going to go hand wise Again, as I mentioned, be careful about the knuckle joint. I feel like that's the part that would be the weakest link there, so just just be a little careful bending that part. Some uh, demonstration of the shoulder articulation here. Pretty good. And that back bend. Yes, this thing will break its back bending over backwards. <laughs> just like that. And when it does, it actually opens up the little thrusters on the uh, torso here. There's like two thrusters on the front, two on the back. If it bends forward, it'll open the ones on the back up. If it bends back, it opens the ones on the front up. A very nice uh, little mechanical mechanism going on there. A little close-up of those two thrusters here that I'm, I was talking about. And here it is from the back. And it's bending all the way forward here. Lots of good forward and backward bend in the uh, torso here. Here's that front uh, cockpit hatch. Uh, the Xeon technically has two cockpits. There's one in the torso and there's one in the head. Uh, the Xeon was designed to... It could be operated normally by two normal pilots or by one new type pilot. So, of course, Char is a partial new type, so he piloted it from the head and he was perfectly fine. But here's the cockpit hatch on the back of the head. Opens up. And here it is with the skirt armor kind of splayed out in all directions here. And it, it opens up and this kind of, you can, you can open the skirt armor up, you can kind of move it around and arrange it however you want to. So pretty nice. Gives you a little bit more range with the uh, thrusters that are underneath. Here's another look underneath. And okay, yeah, I was trying to show off the 
the movable hip joint for the uh, main thruster here. It's really hard to kind of pull off on this kit. It doesn't like to really stay put, I noticed, but it's kind of one minor niggle, here, niggle with the kit. And here it is with the uh, the stands on the bottom of the kit here, and it'll just it'll stand up on a surface just like that. So if you don't want it on the action base, you can just put the little feet stands on it and set it down. It'll be fine. But it's the Xeon. It's a space-made mobile suit. It should be in the air, in flight. So they gave you an action base. So use the action base. So you have a couple options. You can plug the action base in, right into the back of the back of the skirt, like so. It has sort of a flying backwards pose sort of thing. You can do like that. It's just want to have an un 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 unobstructed view of the under underside of the suit. There is a nice little action pose, like it. Or you can do, or you can attach the action base to the underside of the short armor and have a forward flying pose like this. Oh yeah, it'll connect just like that. And here it is with the extendo arms, the all range attack with the beam. Beam handguns, I'm gonna call them that way. I don't know what Xeon's obsession is with putting guns in hands. It seems like such a bad idea to do, but. Uh, yeah, Xeon, we're gonna. Yes, I know. Let's put beam. beam guns in the fingers. No one, no one will ever guess it. There's a beam gun there, even though the hands are huge. Anyway, yeah, you can you can try to balance the hands on these little stands, but these stands are kind of flimsy. They're not really stable, so you kind of have to balance them straight up on them. The wire is kind of a pain in the ass to put in, so you may want to cut it shorter. I didn't cut it short. I, I used the full length of the wire for this, so just to kind of demonstrate how far you can go with these things, so... Decently far. Here it is next to the RX-782 Gundam in a nice little action pose. Yes. Yes. Cha! I'm coming for you. Here it is the head by itself. The head will disconnect pretty easily. You don't really get an actual separate stand for the head, but I did discover that you can use the little flimsy these little flimsy arm supports to kind of stick the head into. But uh, the actual head on the, the hole on the the uh, head is actually too big for a standard action base peg, so it won't really fit properly. But you can stick it on the uh, end of this thing, so I guess you can always do that if you want. And just no fun little picture here. Just to see how show you how big the hands are. It can hold the head of the head of the Gundam just like that. And a little size comparison here. I would imagine if we had like a perfect Xeon, it would probably be about this height compared to the Gundam, just to kind of give you an idea. And then another action pose. And this is what other this is. I guess these are the accessories that come with the kit. If you want to think of it that way, there's really not much in terms of it. Just the, basically the stand, the little stand pieces and the actual action base stand itself and the wires it's kind of it everything else is just kind of like miscellaneous stuff that you don't really need with this kit so just again just throw them in a bag and save them for use on something else and yeah that's kind of it for the uh, photo gallery here so let's uh hmm take a look at the actual kit here for a little bit I promise it won't be too long Looking at the wrong camera here. This camera, okay. Xeong. This thing is, this is probably, no, I hate saying this, it's probably one of the best real grade kits I've built in a long time. And this may be, this may actually be the best real grade kit I've built now. I'm serious about that. I built the Sazavi, I built the real grade new Gundam. Uh, well, not actually, no. <clears throat> I take that back. I haven't built the, the new Gundam yet. It is coming soon. Uh, I'm, 
the unicorn gun is what it was uh, meant to say, but I actually like this better than the uh, Sazabi actually. Sazabi is good, but it is a little um, finicky. This thing is surprisingly solid. Maybe it's because it has no legs on it, but yeah. So these arms, pr pretty good range of motion on these arms here. Um, there is a, a little bit of movable piece here on the shoulder here, which was kind of hard to like demonstrate in the photos, but this little piece here will move up like that. It does nothing for the articulation, it's just kind of there, so I just felt I should point that out. And yeah, torso range, and this guy. Look at that. Look at that. That's what it looks like from the back here. Again, these little thrusters here, see they kind of open up like that. And we'll do the same thing on the front as I've been for, just like that. Um, yeah. You kind of have to pull this out just a little bit here to kind of get the full range out of the uh, torso. But, there you go. You kind of wiggle that back in place. And, yeah. Now the thrusters won't go back in place by themselves, you do have to kind of push them back in. So that is uh, one thing to uh, keep in mind. In the head here, Let's see here. Again, movable mono eye. It works just like the way it does in the uh, Zaku kits, like the Master Grade and the Real Grade Zaku. And just kind of show the head comes off real easily. It doesn't. It's just kind of wedged on there. Let's take it back on. Also, these little pieces will move as well. With one hand here, you know, just like that. Straighten that out. Uh, neck bend. Pretty good. What you got right there. And then the shoulder. This will come out to give you some greater range. Motion like so, and move forward. So, oh. squeeze that back in. These cockpit hash. This one's a little tricky to open. It, it it has to kind of come out a little bit like so, and then open up like that, and then just kind of. Push it back in. Back one, real simple, just kind of pull it down. All you do. Get that back in. Now, the other uh, action base slot is kind of hidden behind this little panel here. You can open it up. Be right there. Put that back in. So, all the skirt armor stuff, as I showed before, this will all unlock and you can move it around as you want. One, not like so. One comes out. They're all in these little joints that are in here, and just kind of swing out. And the tail kind of moves up out of the way like that. These thrusters inside, they will move around a bit. This one, you can kind of orient them a little bit here if you want. Not a whole lot of range here, but you can get some uh, movement out of these. Now this main one here, here, okay. Okay, there, you, you can actually see the wire right there. The wire runs around this kind of inside lip on the thruster here. It's very hard to see when the kit is complete, but you can kind of, you can see it right there. And I think you can actually see, yeah, you can see the wire break right there too. Unfortunately, I didn't realize the wire break was going to show up right there, but, but that's what it is. So this here, this kind of acts in place of the leg, if there was a leg here. So there is some back and forth movement on this here. And a little bit of side to side, not a whole lot, not a whole lot of range here. Now this little piece here, this is what I was talking about earlier. This doesn't really like to kind of stay locked in place too well, I've noticed. So there's a little switch tab here. You have to kind of pull it out and that can move these pieces around like so, like that. And this is supposed to lock it in place, but sometimes it will kind of work its way loose and come apart here. And actually my thruster is kind of coming apart here a little bit. That's why it's getting loose. Yeah, stick back together. There we go. It was starting to come apart on me a little bit there. But yeah. That gives you a little bit more range out of this here. When it's like that. Yeah. You know that. Uh, the landing skids. Actually let me put this thing back. Okay. 
it was tucked in and it'll actually stay put okay anyway you got your front piece here it kind of comes off like so and there's two pieces on the back right here i come off if i can get those off come on come on come on there we go kind of hard to get my fingers in there all right so you take these pieces here this one is the one that goes here this one goes over here and this one goes up here yeah and you can just kind of put these on here. And that needs to go this way, I believe. And then go. And that one goes there. Alright. So there it is with the little heat landing skids, I guess you want to call them that. Trying to fix the uh, skirt armor here. Get it back together properly here. Kind of like a big puzzle piece. It'll like fit itself back together again. Anyway, there we go. And then just kind of set that down. Just like so. Now again, we're just standing with the feet. I don't have the Gundam for size comparisons here, but I do have Shar Zaku here, so you can kind of compare these two side by side, size wise. Zeong is a bit is a big boy despite having no legs. Not quite as uh, tall as the Sazabi, I believe, but he's he's a he's a pretty big dude. He'll be even bigger when he has uh, legs. And here's the stand too, by the way, in the background here. I have the stand right here. Again, the stand would kind of go right here on the kit. I have it on there. Like so. Oh yeah. Kind of hard to show on the camera here, but it's, he fell over. He fell! I fell over and I have no legs and I cannot get back up. Anyway. I love having an, an action based stand. This kit needed an action based stand. The band I didn't deliver one with this kit, that would have been a huge disservice, but at least I'm glad they did. Oh. By the way, speaking of things to kind of just watch out for, be careful with these little antennas. They're very pointy and they're very sharp. I think more than once I accidentally kind of stuck, almost stuck my finger on these things. But yeah, don't, don't, don't stick yourself on the uh, antennas. And don't break them either. Anyway, let's talk about these hands, because that's kind of like the big thing about this guy here. So let me, I'm going to take one of these off here just to demonstrate. That's what it looks like. Connection right there. All right. These hands. These hands are the uh, mesh joint frames that are come with this kit. They're pretty good here. So, and that's about the range of motion you're going to get on these. It's not quite a close fist, but that's probably adequate enough. I know the perfect Xeon comes with a big uh, sword. I don't know if this is going to be able to hold anything, but maybe if the handle is like Thick enough, maybe it'll be able to handle it. Hold it so. Uh, wrist joint. There is a little bit of a wrist joint right here, so you can kind of bend back like so, or bend forward like that. Uh, this slides in and out like so. There's little uh, connection pegs in here that are used for the flimsy little stands that plug into, and that's what holds the arms up. Again, these things are... Oh, okay, it actually bounced that time. I get it perfectly, but uh, if you're off like a little bit, it's just going to fall over, so... The wire kind of goes into this little 
tiny little hole right there. Not the easiest thing to get in there sometimes. Um, let's see if I can manage it here. There we go. Okay, I got it in. And that would connect into the arm right here. Get that in there. All right. There we go. You have your Xeong arm. You. Pat myself on the head. Just like that. I can scratch my own back. Hmm. All right. Yeah, let me take that off here. Uh, one other thing I will mention here, and this is a purely optional thing, but if you happen to have enough um, yellow beam saber blades and one 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 and four fourth kits, you can stick the uh, beam blades in the fingers. You can have the beams uh, shooting out of the fingers like that. Unfortunately, these are the only yellow uh, beam blades I have. Uh, I have, and these are from my from my uh, Barzam kit. The only high grade kit I have has yellow beams. But if you don't care about that, you can use pink beams. Because I have plenty of those. So, but anyway, there's uh, the optional uh, Xeong, I think a final battle version Xeong comes with all the effect parts and everything. It uses uh, beam saber blades for the, uh, the fingers. So, you can have a uh, beam shooting out of the fingers here. It's, it's pretty nice if you... Uh, can do that. You don't have to, have to buy the expansion set for that, so if you have enough of those yellow beam saber blades lying around, you can just kind of do that. The only thing you won't have are the actual thruster effect parts. But I, but I hear even some of those are available in another um, option part set, so this is something to consider. But yeah. That is the real grade Xeon. This is the most impressive kit. And probably this is the most impressive kit I've built so far this year. So this is highly recommended. Um, again, if you're a person who, a builder who likes internal frames, get this kit. This kit is amazing in terms of internal detail. And even on the outside detail is pretty good too. This is, this is, this is nothing to um, ignore here, so. Yeah, this is um, this is a very surprising kit for a mobile suit that's kind of boring in many ways. But Bandai really like they really one up themselves with this kit here. I mean, this was just it was a fun build too. So anyway, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that review and found this informative. Um, yeah. What more is there to say about this kit? This is easily a 10 out of 10 for me, so. Quiet. Or I'll come for you. Alright. Take care. Bye-bye.